everyone, welcome to this example video where I'm going to talk about curve sketching, specifically of a trigonometric function or a trig function. So let's just get started. Uh, if you could consider giving my video a like or subscribing and sharing my channel, that would super help me out. Thanks a lot. And we're going to look at sketching the curve. So f of x equals cosine of x minus square root of 3 times sine of x uh, from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so let's get started by first determining what is the domain. Well, in this case, this is actually already spelled out for us, right? So it's it's literally from 0 to 2 pi. So I can just note that, but this is just best practices here. Now, symmetry. You might have to look at a list of trig identities just to kind of remember how would you actually evaluate this. But what this will end up equaling, if you just look up some trig identities on this, you're going to get cosine of x plus the square root of sine of x, so there is none. And then finally asymptotes, so there are also going to be none of these, so we're good to go. All right, so first things first, um, or I guess second things second. Um, so now we need to find the first and second derivatives. So why don't you pause the video here, hit play when you found them, and I'll show you the answer. Okay, so here I go. Okay, so there's my first and second derivatives, so now let's get going. First, I need to find the critical points. So there are going to be no places where this is undefined, so I just have to set this equal to zero and solve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate um, this, this really negative square root of 3. So I'll bring the sine of x over, and then I can divide both sides by cosine of x. So ultimately, I'm going to get the negative square root of 3 equals sine of x over cosine of x, i.e. I'm going to get that the negative square root of 3 equals the tangent of x. Now, if you're not sure, I would recommend actually looking at a unit circle just to figure this out. This is the kind of stuff where you should actually invest the time to make sure that you understand this. This is something that people get very rusty on. So, um, pause the video if you need to spend a second to figure this out. Otherwise, I'll just tell you the answers to these. So this is going to be x equals 2 pi over 3 or x equals 5 pi over 3. So in our given domain, those would be our two possible uh, critical points. Okay, so up next, now we have to figure out our intervals of increasing and decreasing. And then as a consequence, we're really doing the first derivative test, so we will also determine um, any max and mins. So uh, pause the video here, set up the table. If you want to set up the whole thing, go for it, and then you can check your answer. Just hit play. So first I'll set up the table. And then I'll fill in the signs here. So this first interval will be decreasing, this will be increasing, and this will be decreasing. So again, you might want to have a unit circle in front of you when you do this. If you're not familiar with this, I have videos where I discuss how to actually do this. This is the first derivative test. So I'm kind of just grazing over this here because this video is already going to be pretty long. So if you need some examples on this, feel free to, to look at my series on the first derivative test. Okay, so now I can say that here I'm going to have a minimum and here I'm going to have a maximum. So I'll just note that. Okay, so I've got those two points listed and I plugged them back into the original function. That's how you figure out those points. I need to know these for later on, so it's worth it for me just to figure this information out now. Okay, so now let's talk about possible points of inflection. So here I need the second derivative for this. Once again, there's gonna be no places where this is actually undefined, so instead I just need to set this equal to zero. And once again, I'll go through the steps to solve. So maybe you wanna pause the video here, hit play when you think you've found those points. And so just like in before, so I set this equal to zero, I'm gonna divide, in this case, both sides by sine, so now I get the square root of 3 equals the cosine of x over sine of x. And so this is really the cotangent of x. So where will the cotangent of x equal the square root of 3? Well, you know, again, you might have to stare at a unit circle a little bit to figure this out. But the two points are going to be pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. So those are my potential inflection points. So now to confirm whether or not those are inflection points, why don't we go ahead and just uh, take a look at our concavity here. So once again, I want you to set up the table. You can go ahead and figure out your intervals of concavity. Hit play when you're ready. Okay, so I'll go ahead and set up the table.
and this is going to be concave down, concave up, and concave down. Again, I cover this kind of work in detail in other videos, so I'm going to kind of omit this here and assume you're okay with this part. But checking your work, these are what you should have gotten. So once again, we see now that we've got um, some conclusions we can make, this time about inflection points. So I have inf an inflection point both at pi over 6 and at 7 pi over 6, so we're all good to go here. Okay, so um, let me summarize that. Okay, and so now we really have all the information that we need to start graphing. So you'll notice here I now have a list of all of the relevant points that I found. In my opinion, this is actually a very important list to kind of keep going for yourself. I am missing um, two points though. I should also note what the endpoints are, so let me write those down as well. Okay, so I cleared myself some space so that I can write that my endpoints here, this is going to be 0, 1, and 2 pi comma 1. Since this is a closed domain, this is actually kind of important information to know. So where I want to start here is I just want to plot all of these points. So maybe you should pause the video and plot all of these on your graph and then hit play when you're ready. So first things first, I just plotted my endpoints. So here's 0, 1. Here is my minimum. Or, sorry. I just realized I had my labels uh, mixed up here. Sorry about that. So this is my minimum, obviously, and this is my maximum. Okay, so here's my minimum, here's one of my maximums, and then here's my other endpoints. Now let me graph those inflection points. Okay, so now I've got my inflection points as well. So now what you might want to do is just reference some of these tables. So for instance, if I go back to this table over here. So you'll see that I need to start out by decreasing and then when I go to that minimum I start increasing. And I can see here that pi over 6 is going to be this inflection point so then I should start to see concave up um, after pi over 6 to 7 pi over 6. So just to put all of that together that's going to come out to look like this. And then I'm going to come back up here and then I'm actually supposed to go back to decreasing to right here. So there's kind of everything from my table. So that's the idea behind the curve sketching for a trig function. So I'll leave it at that. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them for me. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.